Look what I'm doing. Look at, look at, I'm in the car. I'm driving the car. Been a few months. It's so much fun. There's all kinds of lights on in here. I need to take this in somewhere and I need gas. I'm nervous about getting gas because the car wouldn't start for me. Um, I had to jump it to get it going. I've driven like 15 miles, so, oh wait, am I up? I'm up. As I was saying, the car wouldn't start. Oh, can I not get to the gas station from here? Crap, I don't think I can. The car wouldn't start, so, uh, which isn't that unusual. It's a 14 year old car and it's been sitting around without anybody driving it for a few months. But um, I'm a little nervous that when I pull up to the pump and turn the car off, and then uh, I've done filling up, it may not want to start for me. Yeah, I guess we'll find out together. Good thing I have jumper cables in the back of my car. Anyways, hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, tropical plant party, long time, no drive. Having a independence again feels fantastic and driving is so much fun. Okay, that's enough of that nonsense. I'm gonna put gas in the car and hopefully it'll start up and uh, maybe head up some nurseries. I don't know, we will see. Dang, this is a slow pump. Been here for like five minutes. That's an exaggeration. Although, not really, but it's because I kept put, I was putting my card in backwards, so it took a while to get things going. My wipe, where's my wipe? Been using a dish rag and putting Lysol on it. Same difference as a wipe, right? You can clean it, last longer. I don't know, it's been working okay for me so far. Still going. I already like had this on there to pick it up, but just to be safe, I'm like wiping absolutely everything I touch. And yes, I have my mask on. Oh, it's done. My hair is ridiculous. I can't get it cut because the you know the hole in my back. I there's nothing I can do about it. All right, moment of truth. Let's see if the car is gonna start. Oh, that is a huge relief. I would have been very, very disappointed if the car hadn't started. What is going on up here? The humidity hits a point where there's just like. Nothing I can do. I wash it this morning and then put Moroccan oil in there, which I don't I don't think I should have done. Oh, the lights went off. Doesn't matter, it still needs to go in and get looked at. There's a bunch of other things going on, you know, old car issues. Do my intro, the whole, t hey, what's up garden friends? Jeff here, tropical plant party. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good, I'm great. I'm trying to figure out why this is wet. I probably had a bunch of the Lysol stuff on my hands. It's whatever, back to driving. I might go to a nursery, though I feel like I should drive this thing around a little bit longer and uh, build the battery up some more. We'll see, look at what a beautiful day it is. See those clouds? They're absolutely gorgeous. I wonder how much time is going to pass in this vlog before I actually do anything plant related. It doesn't really matter, it's a vlog. We can just, sort of, we just do whatever we want over here, it's fine. False alarm, the lights are back on. Oh well, probably just a fuse or something. Oh my goodness, can y'all hear me through this mask? I don't know, it's not coming off, so it doesn't matter. Matt Greenscape Gardens in St. Louis, which is my favorite nursery. They are very, very, very well stocked with the house plants. I mean, they're, just, they're everywhere. I'm really happy house plants have become such a trend because they're so much more available. Look, they have the Shangri-La philodendron. It's more of a heart-shaped leaf to it. I love these. Got the burl marks here. And it looks pretty good too. I mean, that's a pretty heavily established plant. And um, that, yeah, that seems pretty customary for this. This is a nice, very easy to grow philodendron. I mean, it's a good thing I'm not supposed to be lifting anything heavy because I see all kinds of things that they be getting myself in trouble with. And they're saying that like they've sold through a lot of things, which I believe, but at the same time, still very well stocked. Look at how cute this little foxtail palm is. And I'm digging these crotons. I don't know what kind they are, but they remind me of Mr. Freckles, but with like more of an attitude. Pie crust. That's its name. Pie crust. That's, that's a good name. It's got like the little ripple edges on it. It's a neat looking one. I think I like Mr. Freckles enough that I don't feel a need for more crotons, but it looks cool. Okay, this is what I came here for, some Asclepias. I already planted a bunch, but I want to put a row of them in front of the our Green Giant or Borvitate, depending, I mean, I don't know if that's going to happen this week or not. I'm actually still filming last week's vlog, uh, so things are a little bit back asswards for me, but that's what I wanted. $7.99, eh. That's the one. Another thing I really like about this nursery is they have a lot of emphasis on native plants. They have a huge section here, a huge section here, 
and they spend a lot of time educating people about the natives, which I think is pretty awesome. Okay, one more stop. I went to this next nursery last week, and then I suggested everybody check out a different video where I was there for a longer period of time. I don't know if the plant I'm going there for will have made it into the vlog. This is just gonna be a quick in and out though, because I already cased the joint last week. I know what they have and I know what I'm going there for, but I'm very excited for it. And I still, like this driving, so much fun. I'm having a blast here. I'm only going the two places, cause you know, there's a pandemic going on. So I'm trying to minimize where I go. But regardless, this is so much fun. It doesn't look like that many people are as concerned about social distancing as they probably should be, judging by how packed the parking lot is at Top Golf. What the crap is that about? I'm gonna pop in here, grab a shrub or two, and then catch back up at the house. See what I got. Okay, fine. I'll take y'all with me, but it's gotta be quick because I have to pee, and I don't think there's a bathroom here. Okay. <laughs> Interesting timing. Sometimes you know things just aren't meant to be. I came here to get this shrub, exactly this one, and there was a person standing right here tagging it right when I walked up, so not for me. They have others. I like that one. The other ones, the tops are cut. That's the one. It's beautiful, but it's not for me. Just wasn't meant to be, apparently. All right, there's plenty of other things to look at. I don't know if we're going to, though, because like I said, I got a pee. Okay, well, they have more, but I don't like them. I think <laughs> it was just the one. There's just the one that I really liked. These are okay. Ah, that's fine. Not a big deal. Here's something you don't see in St. Louis very often. Look at the size of that crepe myrtle. Holy freaking crap. That is a beauty. They don't usually get this big here because we have these unpredictable winters. This looks like a nachez. I'm going to show you the trunk. It's gorgeous. Look at that. Look at it. I mean, it's like a rainbow. Gosh, this is why I love these. I have one in my backyard, but unfortunately it dies back every winter. The bark. Like, the bark is just what does it for me on these. They're so pretty. We, I, one of my favorites of, like, just a, what I guess you could call a pretty basic plant, but they're stunning. Absolutely stunning. And like I said, you don't see them like this here, ever. It's the first time I've ever seen one like this. It's, but, like, my mind's blown. I've been standing over here admiring the bonsais. They had a Mugo that I was thinking about getting, and then I found this section where they have these ones that are already made. I prefer to make them myself, but it's still neat to look at. I mean, some of these, this is 550 bucks. Probably very old, but <laughs> my point here is that I was so mesmerized by these nice bonsais that I didn't even notice that they have a gigantic monkey puzzle. I mean, oh, there's a spider web in the way. Look at I, this is the, I've never seen one this big, especially here in St. Louis. This is unbelievable. I want this. I don't know how I'm gonna get it, but I want it. I'm probably not gonna get it. It's, I'm sure it's incredibly expensive. But um, look at it. Look at that. They're only marginally hardy here, so that is, that's really rolling some expensive dice for whoever ends up buying it, but that thing is cool. I really would like to know how much it is. I mean, just for jits and shiggles. I wouldn't get it. I don't know where I would put it. I could find a spot, but I just want to know. It's such a cool plant. And here, though, Mugos I was talking about. They don't have any labels and no price, so it's not going to happen. I wouldn't get them not knowing what they are, but they look neat. They would be excellent starters for, like, some really big bonsai. But like I said, I need to know what they are. For bonsai, I'm very particular. It has to have a label. I don't know what they are, but look at this. They have great shape. Even if I wasn't going to bonsai them, they would still look really cool in the winter time, just in a nice planter with some neat rocks. How much you want to bet I end up back here getting one of these things? I wouldn't be surprised. And I'm home. It's actually the next day. It was raining last night. I filmed a video and got the plants put over here into the gorilla cart, which has got way too much water on the bottom. I have to do something about that. I need to drill some bigger holes in there. So here's everything I picked up. I didn't get a ton. They had one of my favorite coleus. This is the electric lime. Look at that foliage. Isn't that pretty? One of my favorites. I love the colors on that coleus. And it's a really good grower too. Grab some zinnias. I love zinnias. Normally I start these from seed, but I just didn't do that this year. So it was good to see some of them at the nursery. And then I was able to grab the things that I was actually there for, which was milkweed. Asclepius tuberosa, which is a native here in Missouri and in much of the United States. I only got 
three of them. I should have gotten four, but I just was so excited about all the other plants that I wasn't thinking clearly. I also have a whole bunch of these euphorbias back here. Ascot Rainbow, they're a perennial, zone six and up. They like a nice well-drained soil. They don't want wet roots. And that's going to be the same for these Asclepias. So my plan was to have these all kind of intermingled together and to be doing a little bit, not necessarily a rock garden, but just a garden area that basically one that's gonna be a low maintenance that doesn't need much tending to. Oh, and I got one of these narrow leaf iron weeds. These are really fun plants. They have really fun, airy foliage and the flowers on them, let me pull the tag back up so you can see it. Aren't those cool flowers? You can get up to four feet tall, two feet wide. It's native to the Southeast United States. This will prefer more of a moist soil. So this is going to go in a different area of the garden. Like over my pollinator garden where I have my hibiscus. I feel like this is all really hard to see, but the sun everywhere else is like really harsh. It's a little bit easier to see in the close-ups, even though it just, my focal length is a little bit off, but that's okay. Yeah, a decent selection. Plants for the wet areas, plants for the dry areas. Want to put them around the green giant arborvitae. <laughs> I call them arborvitaes. I know that bothers people. It's just a force of habit. It's how I was raised. It's how I've heard it from everybody growing up. Arborvitae, is that better? You feel better now? Well, last week I talked about how there was a big stump removed from behind those queen palms over there where there was a big white pine that had died the year before and that I was going to be replacing that with a green giant. So I got to the nursery, got that purchase, they got a sold sticker on it and I'm hoping at some point today that that's going to be brought over and planted. That'll be back there like I said behind those queen palms it'll fill in the gap that doesn't appear to be there right now because I've done a pretty good job filling it in because I like my privacy but there's a really big privacy gap over there, so that's going to get handled. But for right now, since I'm expecting someone to come over here in the next hour with um, a very large tree, it's going to be kind of heavy and hard to get up there. I think it would be considerate of me to go over there and start moving the plants and clearing a path. I should probably do that. I'm going to get these out of the gorilla cart first because there's water sitting in there. They don't need that. And then uh, I'm going to... Where am I gonna put everything? I don't know. I'll figure it out. I don't know if I can move those big queen palms. I know I can move them. I don't know if I should. I've been cleared for light, mild exercise. Those are pretty heavy, but if I use the dolly, ah, that actually wasn't too bad at all. So here's that space. And then back here, great big giant gaping hole. It's kind of, there's no perspective on camera, but that's probably three feet by two feet, more than likely. And, you know, this isn't here much of the year. The shrub doesn't really start to fill out and bush out until, like, I don't know, mid-July. And it dies back to the ground completely every year. So this is all from right here and over there to this wax myrtle completely open and just too much. I'm just going to kind of do this as a before and after since I'm not the one doing the work. But when I come back, there will be a tree there. It's not going to look that impressive with this giant Lespedes in front of it, but I'm going to be glad it's there during the winter time. Hey, that looks pretty good. I know it looks like it might be crooked, but it's not. It's just that it's got a little bit more growth on this side than on this side. Checked it many times. They managed to get this out of the truck and into the gorilla cart without too much trouble. Hey, Tobes. Toby, you want to come over here? Come here. Come here. He's like, no, nah, I'm not coming over there. I can't get, oh, don't get, all right. I didn't, that's not what I meant. To be fair, it is what I asked of you, but no, 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 Go shake off, Toby, go shake off. Okay, anyways, as I was saying, I did have to cut back this Lespedeza. It was just kind of necessary. There was, it came all the way over to like, right around here on this wall. And it was just making things way too complicated. Had to get that cart up against this wall and lift it up there. That took, to really two people I've kind of helped but not really just sort of help balance things this whole area has a slope to it that's somewhat problematic but necessary because there's a drain here there's another drain down there and there's another drain over there I talked about in last week's vlog how this like my entire yard is just full of drainage and drains which is great because of this drain things are sloped in a way to make sure that things get carried to that drain and not just rush over it and over the front of this wall because that happens Sometimes, not very often, but on rare occasions. So I do need to come in here with a little hand trowel and just very lightly trench this out to like right here. That'll be pretty easy. And uh, in the future, 
we're not going to be able to do this right now, but I would like to gravel this area up here. I think that that would look nice. It would be more clean. You can use the blower. It would need to be big chunks of gravel. Then you just use the blower to get all the leaves and everything off of it. It's it's a pain as far as mulching goes up here, so I'd just rather not have to do it as often. You know, the gravel, you have to refresh it every few years, but otherwise it's not too bad. And there's already tons of cobble. You can't really tell because there's all this stuff in the way, but there's cobble and great big pile of dog poop up there, but around those drains and might just bring that around here in the future and not necessarily do a rock garden, but just have things that are more dry loving. This is a hard area to water. Now the uh, Thuja, this green giant arborvitae is going to want plenty of water. It's been watered a ton. I'm going to run drip to it so that it gets soaked by a timer that first year, really the first couple years, but really the first year, it's very important to make sure that these stay very, very well hydrated and there aren't any air pockets around the roots. So when it got planted up, I did make sure that the clay, because that's mostly what's over here is clay and gravel, got blended in with a few bags of really nice, organically rich garden soil and some continuous release fertilizer and the root ball was raised up like so it's not down low. You don't want to bury the root balls on these guys because they can die. So this is like right about where that burlap was. That's just about perfect. That's a little bit more exposed to the front if I don't get more something down to prevent erosion if we have more storms. But in the back, it should withstand and hold itself together. At some point in a few weeks when I'm able to pick up bags of gravel and stuff like that, I think that that would look nice. Fill this in and then uh, I'll have that on drip because it needs plenty of water, but otherwise I will probably do the rest of this area with things that, like I just showed the Asclepius, that tuberosa variety, they don't like a ton of water. They can handle it, but they're more of a dry prairie type Asclepius. I'll have some of those in here, maybe a prickly pear in the back. That's the nice thing about drip, right, is that if I wanted to, I could potentially come in here and maybe put banana cannas in the back and just have those on drip. And then this will probably need to be on drip for a few years. And then everything else can just be nice and dry. And they can't be too close together because the entire root zone around the water loving plants needs to stay moist in the root zone around the... You get what I'm saying though. There's enough of a slope here that I think I could have some fun with this area. And there's a needle palm over here. It's been there for many, many, many years, and it's nice to be able to finally see it. I had, back in the spring, before everything went south, I had intended on doing a row of super tunias from here all the way down over here. I don't know how big this area looks on camera, but it's roughly from, I'd say, where the Les Bedeza is down to right around here. It's probably a good 10 or 12 feet. It's actually a pretty big space. That was the intention. I ordered tons of super tunias and this was good, just gonna be a rainbow. And then all this stuff happened and I needed to pile things up in a way that they'd get watered automatically because you, you know what was going on. Another reason a lot of the super tunias just ended up planted together in these planters, which I think came out beautifully. So I'm okay with it. Now, you know, I've talked about my issues with the sweet potato vines, how I love them and I can't stay away from them, but they just go out of control. This would be a great spot for sweet potato vines. Yes, they love water, but again, with drip, not a big deal. And these is, this is all just thinking. I'm not doing any of this stuff right now. I am going to hold off on putting the Asclepius up here until I figure out what kind of gravel I want to get put up there. And I want to plant it out a little bit more. So I may go ahead and pot those Asclepius up to something a little bit larger or bump them over into my pollinator garden. And then when I'm ready to have them over here, I can just dig them up and put them over here. But uh, you know, I'm just, I'm so happy to have this space filled back in. This is going to get huge. That's what these do. It'll probably sit still for a couple years and then just get lots and lots of growth on it. I think that this was the best option for this spot as far as like affordability and speed of growth because I wanted something that would have immediate impact and it had to be light enough to get up this wall. This wasn't light, it was like 200 pounds, but that's doable with the gorilla cart, a truck, and a few people. It's unfortunate I had to give the Lespedeza a big trim because this thing always puts on such an incredible show this time of year, it's just now starting to flower. It's all right, there's still plenty of stems on here to flower. The plant itself is going to be fine. This is very well established. It might even encourage it to put out some new growth. I doubt that I'll have time to flower this year though. Yeah, there's something I can get checked off my list that I wanted to have done for well over a year and this makes me so happy. It doesn't seem like that big of a deal right now because I had things piled up in a way to add some privacy here. 
like I said, in the winter time, this is all very exposed because this is deciduous here. I don't have any plants over here like I, I don't have any right now. And it's just, it's just, it's too much. Like I mentioned, everything just looks right down into the windows of the house. Like the neighbors are all right above me. So it's really nice to have that blocked off again, or at least something planted to start getting it blocked off again. So that's great. Glad to have the arborvitae in there. Looking good. Now I just eh, need to figure out what to do with all the stuff that was over there. These queen palms that actually have bounced back nice. I know they don't look great, but remember these were on the brink of death last winter when they got frozen to the ground and saw 13 degree temperatures and snow and ice and everything. And this is in the recovery, which isn't too bad. I mean, they're actually pretty freaking huge. But there's all of this. I'm gonna repot this tree fern too. Might get to that in this video, or I might do it in a different video. I don't know. I don't have a plan. I'm just, I just need to, it's, I need to start tidying and cleaning. Speaking of which, this gorgeous, absolutely stunning hydrangea tree. I had said I was gonna keep it over here so I could enjoy the blooms, but it actually belongs down there by those blue pots. So I might move it because the pathway here is getting kind of narrow. Like when you walk through here, you tend to get hit by these flowers and they're very pretty flowers. They're worse things to be hit by, but throughout most of the day, there are bees all over these, which is great. I want to feed the bees. Uh, that's really important. Got to take care of the pollinators, but um, I don't like want to walk through them. You get it? Don't want to go through like a cloud of honeybees. That's, that's not very much fun. So even though I don't have a pot that matches this one to go on the other side down, when I get to that, we'll talk about it. I think I'm, I'm just, I'm very much in my screw it mode and just, just doing things. It doesn't matter. Like, so what? They won't match this here. Big deal. That'll make sense when I actually explain what it is I'm talking about. Here's what I was talking about. This hydrangea tree right here. That was too much for down there. Like I just said. So now it's over here. It's on the drip. This is the old one that died last year from too much water the pot just kept getting clogged up and so it's okay at some point i need to get the creeping jenny out of here move that into there but this needs some more soil it <laughs> just keeps sinking down i've never had a planter that does it this much usually you know you plant something and the soil will drain down a little bit or like fall down a little bit as you water and you add some more that's totally normal. But with this one, it's like, I just keep adding soil and it just keeps sinking. I add soil and it sinks. And I think it's because I have a whole bunch of lava and like plastic bottles and all kinds of things in the lower like six inches or so for drainage. So it's just, I think I just went overboard with those things. So things are, it doesn't matter. Uh, that's a two person job. I need someone to like lift the plant up while soil gets added. So eventually that will get done. Yeah, it's not going to match having that blue pot on that end with the hydrangea tree with this stone stone one over here, but I don't, I don't care. At least I don't care this year. I'm gonna have my eyes peeled for matching pottery. I originally thought I could get another one of these big gray pots, but then I got online and they were still selling them, but only in uh, the 24 inch size and that's a 30 inch. So it just, it just is what it is. And it, what it is, is fine. Everything's fine. It's okay. Not getting hung up on weird little things like that right now. I mean, it's not weird to want your pottery to match, right? That would look much better, but this isn't the year for it. That was surprisingly not very heavy. I didn't carry it down there. I just scooted it onto the dolly and wheeled it over, but it wasn't that bad. It was nice to move something big and not feel like I was straining anything. Now I've opened things back up over here, which is good because like I couldn't get back to some of the plants for quite a while. All my gingers are piled up. The rest of those annuals from the last vlog that I was trying to get planted up and I said, eh, that's enough. I did what I could. So uh, I may, <laughs> some, some of them, I'm just gonna cut back and see what happens with them. You know, like the petunias, I mean, uh, it's just what happens, you know. Things stay in the nursery cans for four months, that's the way it goes, so. But I mean, I will at least give them a cut back and see what happens with them. And some lemon coral sedums, I did find a few more of those. I figured I had some more. These are actually from last year and they just came back. So I can still use those if need be. And then the rest of these things I'll use as fillers and fall planters. I'm just kind of thinking out loud here. So I'm trying to organize and it's just, it is killing me. I want to plant this area up so bad, but I'm not going to, I'm gonna wait. So it's not just, just, this isn't the time. I wanna take my time with it so everything looks right and then be methodical with things of just being like, oh, because I have, you know, I don't plant things in such a long time. 
I have this internal drive that I've always had to be like, hey, look, space, let's fill it with plants. It seems like the better thing to do would be to plan this out well, and I still have to trench it out and figure out what kind of gravel I want. I did put a couple of my little sable miners up here because I was thinking those might actually be kind of cool to have up on this wall. The only issue with that is if we have a really bad winter, then they'll need to be protected. And some those little domes and the things that you end up putting over them are kind of an eyesore. And I don't really want the neighbors to have to look at that. So I may not do that. This needle palm over here, I've never had to protect that. At least not since it was planted. I've maybe protected it like three times, but otherwise it gets pretty sheltered by the spruce up there. And uh, you know, and eventually this arbor, <laughs> why can't I say it? Arborvitae. Whatever, the green giant Thuja. Eventually that's going to take up from uh, over here to pretty much all the way over here. So anything gets planted up here, will pretty much just be for fun and temporary only for a few years. It's, just, it's fun to think about, but not for right now. It is for right now. What do I need to do? I almost forgot I still need to handle these queen palms and get them pruned up somehow. I can't reach up that high. Someone else might have to do that for me, but I need to put these somewhere else near a drip line because they're very big and they need a lot of water and they're, you know, they're on the mend. And if they're on the mend, then they especially, like, they can't miss waterings with them. I have this area that I've been working on cleaning up. I haven't really done it in the vlogs, but essentially this is where all my, like, my overflow pottery was. I think if I get this cleared out, then I could put one of those queen palms right here alongside the tiki bar, which is trash. It's like completely rotted out, but maybe the queen palm will help straighten it back out. I don't know. It's a mess. And I'm just now getting to a point where I can like bend down and do things at a slow pace. So this was, I don't know if anybody will remember, but at one point I had pottery in this area that flowed all the way out to right about here. I've already gotten some of it rearranged and organized. Like I had this windmill palm that's been on the ground over here and I got that put up here on the wall and I have my clam planters that I didn't do this year, but I need to clean them up and store them away. I'll do those next year, hopefully, depending on what's going on with life next year. So I should be able to squeeze some more pots down along the, there's a wall here. I should be able to squeeze some more in back here and then free up the space. I don't know, we'll see. Hey, oh, thank goodness for the cart. I can reach those fronds now and get them cleaned up. I don't necessarily think this is going to do the trick, but I think it'll at least help. I'll start up high, I can like work my way down. What about this, will that go? Nope. All right, we have to find the like big pruners for some of these. What about this one? Yep. That's got to go. Will that come off? Let's see. Uh, try oh, hey, look at that. That one came right off. Do some cleanup on that trunk, too. Get some of the old bases off of there. Throw that into the pile. How loose is that? That one's not loose enough. That might have been it. Maybe just, maybe just these two. Potentially three. Can any, I hope that this is in frame. It's so sunny, I cannot see my screen at all, which usually means I should just not film what I'm doing. Yet yeah, here we are. Yeah, I'm gonna have to get the whoppers for those. That's an improvement, but still not perfect. Still a lot of dirt on the ground. I'm gonna let it dry out and then sweep it away. I was gonna hose it off and I thought that seemed kind of wasteful for, you know, water-wise. Still have to organize lots of the little pottery, but I got the big queen moved over here. <laughs> the bar's still leaning. I actually, I decided to scoot it over. I didn't want the bar to actually be leaning on it because this is still developing a new crown because it had that bud rot. So it didn't seem like a good idea to have any pressure on there. And this thing, it's, it's gonna go probably next spring, maybe even sooner than that. I, that's not something I can do right now, but it's like I said, it's got all kinds of rot in it. I uh, will probably end up just taking it apart and build a new frame out of two by fours and then reusing the pieces as a shell around those two by fours as opposed to getting a new tiki bar because the parts are fine it's just structurally it's just garbage really terribly made so I think that building a simple frame out of two by fours and then wrapping everything around there is that sh I think that'll work the top's rotten but that's an easy thing to fix piece of plywood treat it and I'll do like a mosaic or something on top of it that's not a big deal that'll be fine but that's a project for another time because I can't you know the arm situation still trying to get into the swing of things that's 
this it's, it's, it's good enough for now. As far as this queen palm is concerned, I know it would make sense to put it on the other side of the tiki bar there, but I don't have enough water pressure to put anything else on drip over there. So I think it's just, it's going to have to go back over there because there's enough pressure to keep it well watered over there. And then there's, you know, only a couple months left to get that thing going again. So it's important that it stays on drip. There's nothing wrong with putting it over there. It'll be fine over there. Yay, moved another plant. How exciting. Is this the riveting content you came here for? Probably not. Sorry guys, just gotta go at my own pace. Things are slow these days. Hey Tuck. Yeah, I'm kind of getting how you're feeling these days, Tucker. And Toby. Like three old men over here. Oh, 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 hello, hello, hi. Hey Tucker. Hello, what are you doing? That is very invasive, bud. Hey, okay, alright, so I was gonna walk over there, but someone decided that they needed to be... You get it. So I need to do some trimming on the banana trees. I don't know how exciting that's going to be, but <laughs> how exciting is the rest of this bed? Yeah, I mentioned last week how I'm tired of walking through here and just getting smacked right in the face every time I go through there. So I'm just gonna get some of the lower leaves out, then I'll thin out the other clump. I need to open them up. It has to be done every few weeks. I don't like them to get too full down well. Just because I like to be able to see through them. Okay, so I'm trying to like edge my way back here. It's not a lot of room to work. Ooh, look at the water dancing around inside the bikini teenies. This is a fun thing that I don't know if I've talked about with these. When they get full of water, they spill forward. Like, so when it rains really hard, these slowly fill up and then they dip forward and the water runs out of them and then they bounce back and it's like they all look like they're dancing. It's really cool. I was in the middle of some... What was I doing? Oh, yeah. Trim the bananas. I don't know if this is even worth vlogging because, I mean, there's not going to be like a before and after because I didn't I didn't think I had to stand back. That and the elephant ears are so tall, so I'm not really going to be able to see anything. Hey, Tobes. Or Tucker. Hi, Tucker. You're just, you're just poop. You're walking and pooping. Walking and pooping all over the patio. My gosh. Okay. Yeah, that looks much better. It's thin, but it doesn't matter. These will be completely flushed back out. Won't even be able to tell they were pruned within like a week and a half. And I can walk through here without having my face smack my banana leaves. Oh, I probably... <laughs> yeah, I probably should have gotten that one. Didn't notice it from down below. See, I like being able to see through there. And like I said, in a week, these are going to be flushed back out and so full that the prune, the trim, really won't even be noticeable. Where are you going? You're staring at that gate like you're going somewhere, Tuck. Where are you going, huh? You snooping? You hear neighbors? You snooping on the neighbors, Tucker? That's not very polite. You really shouldn't be doing that. I need to... I don't think I'm going to, but I need to come in here and trim this up, too. Because look how far this dune grass has grown over the pathway. Like, a considerable amount. It should be, like, all the way back over there. So pretty much everything from right here and over is what would need to go. But eh, that stuff kind of makes me itchy, so I'm going to hold off on that. What are you doing? Look at you up there on that wall being all tall. Look how tall you got, Tucker. Look how tall you... Oh, you leaving? All right, bye, Tucker. Toby. Hey, <laughs> Toby, you're right in my face, Toby. Right in my face, bud. How's it going? Tucker. Hey, you guys have been around this vlog a lot today, haven't you? Just sat down for a little bit of a breather. Just like did a whole bunch of stuff in a short amount of time. Went ahead and took this Lespedeza and pulled it up onto a stake. It was just, it was driving me kind of bonkers how it was coming down over the patio here. It's a great shrub. I talk about it all the time. I love it. I think I already talked about it earlier in this vlog, but it's just, it's, it was too much. So I'm trying to tidy things up. That's the whole point of everything I've been doing today is like just trying to get some control back over everything because, you know, I haven't really been able to do much out here this year. So some things just got out of hand. And this whole area was a big part of being able to kind of get things going again. Eventually, like I said, I'll get some gravel up here. If I can find some really cheap like clearance skip laurels this fall, I'll probably put one back here just because I don't want to look back there. I know I talked about cannas and stuff like that, but I really prefer something that is evergreen. And, uh, you know, the plants. Get to do things with the plants. But in time, for now, it's fine. I don't have to fill in every single gap. But I would like to. It's just, I can't help myself. It just feel like I have to plant up every single open spot. But I'm trying to remind myself that's not necessary. I was going to repot this tree fern, but I think I'm going to hold off on that for a separate video. I don't 
think I'm bringing Fern Friday back. Well, I might. I don't know. If I do, it's not gonna be like every single Friday. It'll be like maybe one Friday a month because there's only so many ferns. I just, I'm not in a place and haven't been in a place for a while where I want to commit to saying, hey, every single Friday there's gonna be a video on ferns. That, because I don't know how I'm gonna be feeling. You know, the Saturdays guaranteed. Hopefully Tuesdays or Wednesdays there will be videos, but I don't really want to add on to that. But I have a few ferns, not a lot, that would be fun to talk about. And that tree fern, you know, that, that, that fern's been a thorn in my side. So that would be a good one to kick things off with, at least with getting it repotted. And I really think that the main issue I've had with that tree fern has really mostly been related to its potting mix. So I think repotting it will make a tremendous difference, but I don't know, I could be wrong. And I have to wrap it up. There's a lot more I'm going to do, but it just isn't, like even what I've shown in this vlog, I don't think was even vlog worthy. I want to finish cleaning and tidying and like I need to redo this whole area over here. It doesn't seem worthy of being in the vlog. I just It's just cleaning and putting things away and organizing, which can be fun to watch, I know, but it, it just, it takes a lot longer when you're doing it on camera. So, you know, take that mess in and <laughs> hopefully the next time I vlog, all of that is gonna look so much better. Here's hoping. We will see. That queen palm, that poor queen palm. I'm, I'm impressed it's still alive after being frozen to the ground and everything it went through, but they're not the best looking queen palm. So one they have up against the house over here looks great. When I was at Greenscape earlier in the vlog, they had another queen palm that I just fell in love with and have been thinking about ever since I was there. And I'm like, I can't get another one, but I could, I shouldn't, I could do it, but I shouldn't do it. And I've been tempted to go back there and get it, but uh, the car is in the shop. I showed you all those lights that were on. So I got that into the dealership. They've looked at it before and they're just like, oh, everything's fine. And I was like, no, it's not, but okay. Well, this time they went ahead and said, oh, there's a secondary pump that's broken, got water in it. And I was like, uh, yeah. I mean, I told you this started one day when it was raining really heavily. So I'm glad we figured that out. That has to be replaced. And then there's something wrong with the exhaust. Something's gonna get welded onto there. I don't know. It's a 14 year old car. Teenagers are difficult. It's all right. It's not. I'm just happy to be getting it fixed, but not having the car means couldn't grab that other queen palm. So there might be another trip to the nursery next week. Who knows? Great that I can drive. I'm really happy about that, but there's still a pandemic going on. So I'm going to do my best to refrain from being out if I don't have to be. I think a nice palm tree is, I mean, that's a good enough reason to go out as long as you have the mask on and the hand sanitizers. Like we know what we're doing now. You know, just stay the hell away from each other. And that's something I've been practicing for years. So it comes very easily to me. This isn't new. I always knew everybody had cooties. Oh, and the doctor cleared me to swim. Well, not swim. I can get in there and like walk around. I can't get wet past, like I can't get my shoulder area where the graft is wet. Well, I can't submerge it at least. So, but I can get him walk around, which I'm really happy about. It's uh, kind of chilly. So that'll have to wait a few days. That water's frigid. That's why the iguana's not out here. It got down to 56 the other night and that's way too cold for the iguana. And it's gonna warm back up tomorrow and we'll be back up into the 90s. What you looking for? I don't, I thought I heard someone over there too. Are we both hearing things, Toby? Oh, I trust his ears better than mine. And I'm excited enough about being able to get back in the pool that don't be surprised if some videos start coming out of me doing things from in the pool. Cause I haven't been in there this year and I just, I can't, oh, I can't wait. I cannot wait. I could get in now. But like I said, it's cold, like really cold. It's, it's way too, trust me, you wouldn't want to get in there either. Oh yeah, that was fun. I'm excited I got to go out again. Not gonna be doing that very often, but it was just nice to get out and drive around and have that feeling of independence. Again, it's good to be feeling better, still doing things slowly, because now that I'm able to do some mild exercise and some workouts, which I've been doing, um, there's like this whole different sensation of soreness and pain in that area that I had never felt before. And that's been interesting. So I have to pace myself. I'm just happy to be in a place where I'm able to do that. It's all good news, all good things. All things to be grateful for. I need to cut that off. That is a very old frond. I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything's just going beautifully for you. It's time to go. I talked too much and so I need to get this edited and there's a game on tonight. I'm gonna watch that. Things are good, life is good. I hope everything's good for you too. Maybe, hopefully next week things will be a little bit more concise. I uh, can't make any promises. Alright, but as always, and most importantly everybody, keep on growing. Bye! Bye!